Hello, my name is Esteban Serna. I am a senior DynamoDB specialist solution architect, and I help customers optimize their data models while working with Amazon DynamoDB, but also to choose the right features that they will that will fit their specific use case. In this short video, we're going to discuss about a topic that is very interesting and it's change data capture with Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB supports item level change data capture records that can be streamed in near real time to applications and make decisions based on the content of those records. For example, you could create a change that uh, and by enabling DynamoDB streams, you could create an application that every time that you insert a record to the user's tables, for example, you will send an email to the person saying hi or greeting them. To first understand what we need, why we need to choose between the options that we have with DynamoDB, uh, let's revisit what is inside a DynamoDB stream. What information is present inside an stream? It is basically a JSON object that has different attributes. Those attributes will allow you to see different portions of the data that has been modified. And some of them are the event source, the region, the event source ARN, I mean, um, that matches your stream ARN, the type of event that had happened. And inside DynamoDB, which is the most important um, record, you have the change that was recorded in your item level table. In, in your item level, sorry. We have the approximate creation daytime, which is valid up to the millisecond when that record or that modification happened. We, all, we could have also a new image. We have the sequence number and we have what is the, uh, the, the stream view type. There are four different options. You can have the new events, the old events, the new and the old events, or only the keys that have been modified. There are two options to work with DynamoDB streams. The first one is the DynamoDB stream solution, uh, where you basically record the changes on your application. All that information is sent, all the mutations are sent to DynamoDB streams. Um, and then assuming that you consume all of these streams with, with AWS Lambda, Lambda will pull those records four times per second. If the records match the event filtering condition that you should have configured in Lambda, then the Lambda function will be executed. You could have up to two Lambda functions or two subscribers subscribe to the same shard. We have another option that is called Kinesis Data Streams. Kinesis Data Streams will behave very similar. You will get all your information data uh, from your table. There is a, a, an internal service that is called the Data Replicator Service that will continually add new records to the stream. And then if you are to the Kinesis Data Stream, if, if you're choosing Lambda as well, Lambda will pull once per second to get record from the Kinesis data stream. And if the event filter matches the conditions that you have configured, then a Lambda function will be executed. You can subscribe up to five different Lambda functions to a, 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 a specific shard. There is a little star at the end of that sentence because if you configure Lambda function, but you also configure uh, Kinesis data analytics, or Kinesis Firehose as part of those subscribers, those count as, uh, as, as a Lambda function. So in total, you might need, you, you can only have five subscribers to the same chart. In DynamoDB, you can have two. In DynamoDB stream, sorry, you can have two. In Kinesis data streams, you can have five. The difference with Kinesis data streams is that you get the records that you put in the stream, they might be out of order. That means that your application will have to update the order of the records, and you can do that by using the attribute approximate creation date time. Another difference between Kinesis data streams and DynamoDB streams is that Kinesis data streams, 
with Kinesis data streams, you might have duplicates of records and your application should account for those duplicates. With Kinesis, with, um, with, with DynamoDB streams, you don't have that problem. You get the records in a strict order, as you can see on the left side of the screen, when we have an order one with a status new, with a time zero, and then order one with a status speaking in time one. We keep that order in, in Amazon in DynamoDB streams. If you will do that in Kinesis data stream, you might face a situation where the picking a status will be first and then the new status. Remember, your application is responsible to reconfigure that order if you are using Kinesis data stream. The best way to decide which option is best for you is to compare them side to side. So there are many variables that you should consider. If you're thinking, if your application, if the ordering of the records are very important for you, it might be better to go with DynamoDB streams. But if you require, for example, a data retention period that is very, very, very high in the order of months, it might be better to use Kinesis data streams because Kinesis data streams retain data up to one year. DynamoDB streams can only retain data for 24 hours. If for some reason you forgot to query that stream in the next 24 hours that those changes happen, you will lose that information. With the number of consumers, we already mentioned that with Kinesis data streams, you can have five consumers. With DynamoDB streams, you can have two consumers to the same chart in both cases. But with Kinesis data streams, if you are using the Kinesis client library version two with the enhanced final functionality, you could subscribe up to 20 subscribers to that specific char. The throughput quotas with Kinesis data streams that are virtually unlimited. With DynamoDB streams, we, we do have some service quotas in place by default, and we, which are there. You can have a table with 40,000 read and write capacity units uh, with DynamoDB streams enabled. If you need to increase that, you can contact, contact AWA support. I'm not saying that it's not possible to have it, you just need to remember that there are some quotas and you need to update those quotas. On the durability level, we have multiple availability zones that can handle any kind of failure uh, and ensure that the service is, is, keeps working without interruption. We have the, the delivery model is with, in, in both cases is with pool model over with Kinesis data streams over HTTP for version one and HTTP2 version two uh, with, with enhanced find out functionality, sorry, with the version two, you will use subscribe to shard API. Uh, with version one and DynamoDB streams, you will use the get record API. Now, another important difference between both of those, Kinesis data stream support Kinesis client library version one and two. DynamoDB streams only supports Kinesis client library version one. You might have duplicate records in Kinesis data streams, but DynamoDB streams will guarantee that you don't have duplications and the records are presented in a strict order. Kinesis data streams, you have to reorder them. Uh, and you do have different options, streaming options with both solutions. Now, you might be thinking, what can I actually do with change data capture? Um, and that's where event-driven architectures come into place. One of the best features, the best functionality that you might have in DynamoDB is time to leave. Time to leave will delete the data that you specify uh, for free. You, you specify a number, a column, you define that column as a number, and you put in, in epoch timestamp format when that record wants to be deleted. Then DynamoDB will do it in best effort, scan the ta all the tables, and define if those records need to be expired. If that is true, that data will be deleted for free. And uh, if it's not true, the data will be kept in your table. But remember, since they are in best effort, there is no really an SLA to delete those items. It's usually in the next 20, 48 hours that those items are deleted. The important element here is that when that deletion happens, that generates, if you have enabled DynamoDB streams, an event. That event can be captured and then is stored into S3, for example, for long-term archival. 
But at the same time, you also have with event-driven architectures, every time that there is a change in your data with DynamoDB streams or Kinesis data streams, you can trigger a Lambda function. That Lambda function could generate real-time ag aggregations, and we're talking here about simple aggregations. Uh, you can send those records to Elasticsearch. Those records in Elasticsearch can use full-text search capabilities. Or you could send those records to Kinesis Firehose that will store that information into S3, and eventually you could use Athena queries to execute more ad hoc queries uh, and more aggregational type of queries on your data set. So you keep all your transactional information and queries in DynamoDB and all the other data access like open or full text search and, and, and OLAP can be done with Elasticsearch and Athena respectively. Uh, I eventually, if you if your downstream applications need to notify the change, you can also just notify the change to the other applications. I hope that this video has been useful for you where we define the difference between Kinesis data streams and Amazon DynamoDB streams when we want to see the change of the capture information. Uh, use the comparison to choose the base that fits your requirements. Thank you very much. And my name is Esteban Serna. I am a senior DynamoDB solution architect. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.